Hey everyone, this is Carlos, founder and CEO at Product School. Today I'm here with the CEO and CPO at Air Focus, Malte Scholz. Excuse my non-German accent, Malte. <laughs> um, hope that I didn't butcher your name too much. How are we doing? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, thanks for having me. It's really good to be here. I'm glad to have you. Uh, I remember I was just talking off the camera. You guys bootstrap your business. You've been around for a while and now you raised money and now you're growing. So I'm very, I love those stories and I want to kind of get that backstory from you. So let's start from the very beginning. What, what, what's your background and what inspired you to start Air Focus? Yeah, so uh, I started as a product manager right out of university around seven, seven years ago. And I was dropped into this super strategic role. I don't know what happened, but they kind of expected me to, to turn around the business. And I very quickly learned that uh, at least in this company, product strategy and product management is very broken. And it's it, it has to do with the nature of product management being such a multifaceted, complicated um, thing. Uh, but I also saw a lot of things that could have been in, improved and I, yeah, just like very early on, I thought, well, there need to be better ways than, um, I don't know, using complicated Excel spreadsheets and, and, and always um, looking for a single point of truth um, when it comes to product data and, and mission statements and so on and so on. And yeah, I, I was interested in the in the problem and I started AirFocus really as a side project uh, with my co-founder Christian. We built a prototype, launched it on beta list, and uh, we got feedback, we iterated. Um, so in the beginning, it was really just a little tiny prioritization tool. And um, yeah, it has evolved quite a bit since then. Yeah. That, that's really cool because it means that you are solving your own problem. And that's something that I've seen happening in not only CEOs, but also product managers. Like when, when you really care about the problem that you are solving because you have that problem, you will always have product market fit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I had to solve it. I, I couldn't stand these purchases anymore. 100%. I'm with you. There are so many companies that are trying to replace the Excel because obviously Excel is great for many different use cases, but at the same time, it's not the best for anything. So when it comes yeah. to building products, like I was, we were just talking about it, like so many people out there still use spreadsheets, PowerPoints, whatever, right, to represent a roadmap for their company. And, and now we're seeing different technology that are specific for those for those cases. So what would you say our focus does different than, you know, not the analysis spreadsheet, but all the roadmapping tools out there? Yeah, yeah. So essentially we're we're building a home for, for products and the, the people who build them. So that's actually our new slogan, but um, we are providing PMs with, with everything they, they need to do their job. Uh, and we're trying to make sure that there's a single point of, of truth uh, for the product team and the company even. Um, so you always have the right data at hand when you need to make all these product decisions all the time. Um, so we always say um, you're always prioritizing. So not just like uh, which features to put into which release and so on, but on multiple levels, uh, you're prioritizing uh, your your outcomes, your problems, your opportunities, your, your features and so um, yeah, and, and, and we help product teams uh, with with all these topics from kind of breaking down the bigger mission into objectives uh, and then prioritizing uh, what problems to solve and then to, as you said, like creating and sharing roadmaps that actually align people around um, the, 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 the things that you should work on as, as a team and as a company. So yes. um, let's talk about roadmaps because it's true. Like when you go deep, you realize that a roadmap is not just a list of to-dos, right? It can get very messy very quickly. And now we're seeing how, you know, as a product manager, or thinking more about the user and identifying certain insights that come not just from the company, but sometimes it's from our actual users and other data points, and then transforming those into action and making them more strategic for the entire organization. It's really a challenge. Mm -hmm. So just give me some best practices on how a product team can not leverage road mapping, you know, to really make it a strategic tool. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, as you said, like the the big challenge is to to be strategic, right? And um, it, it, it's very difficult, and 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 all the teams um, struggle with it, and probably everyone will always struggle with it because it's so complicated. But um, there are tricks that you can and should do in order to um, get better at it. And um, 
and like what you should not do is like start with uh, with features and requests that um, have been thrown over the fence by sales and marketing and competitors and and, and, and feature lists and, and so on. So what you should really do is like do um, the right level of discovery and uh, trying to understand the, the problems that you're using uh, that you're solving and the problems that uh, different customer segments have and and in order to kind of put this into uh, the roadmap, there are obviously multiple ways how you could do this. There are outcome-based roadmaps where you really focus on uh, the outcomes and the initi initiatives um, that you should tackle on the on the highest level in order to achieve your mission. Um, but um, we are not uh, not big big fans of of, of telling people um, that they're doing it wrong or that there's just one approach of of of, of solving these problems. We've just learned that. Um, yes, everyone shares these problems because it's so difficult, but at the end of the day, there are often good reasons why why companies um, do what they do. Um, so um, sometimes it, it makes sense to have a feature roadmap um, or even a timeline roadmap, and some people hate it, but and sometimes it makes sense. Uh, but very often, um, the thing that we try to communicate to, to product teams is to, to really um, look at the outcomes that you want to achieve and try to cluster um, opportunities that you have in your product backlog or idea backlog and kind of put them all together in a now next later fashion uh, that that is a process that that works for everyone as a at least as a as a starting point yeah because you're building a product for product managers that's very meta obviously <laughs> the product team may have their own playbook and that's okay there's no yeah, silver bullet that works for everybody however yes. now is there anything that you can do with regards to onboarding by creating templates or by kind of somehow helping those first time users to make sure that they can understand your value proposition and get off the ground quickly? Yeah, I mean, you already mentioned templates. Uh, we had templates from really from, from day one and um, templates are, are great because uh, it brings you a very fast aha moment. So we have been a product led growth company from day one. Uh, we only hired our first sales piece in, person like a like a month ago so um, we had to kind of um, provide our users with these uh, very first aha moments within the software so they they sign up for air um, they they tell us very quickly uh, what problem they have for example I need to build a roadmap because my my, my team needs it or my boss tells me to do so and then uh, we try to get you a result super fast right and um, that could be a template for uh, an outcome based um, non accelerator roadmap you mentioned the company's uh, product led which i think is awesome and we're seeing more and more companies so give me an example of how let's say a user kind of finds out about you and then eventually bubbles this up to a decision maker for them to you know inter integrate their tool with the rest of their stuff yeah, so there's one thing that, that doesn't work uh, and it's uh, sh showing people Facebook ads and then expecting them to sign up and immediately become paying customers. This has proven to not work. Uh, what, what a surprise because that for sure not how I would have bought a software. So um, our target group is super, super interesting because they're super clever people, right? Like um, they're working in product because it's probably one of the, the most um, intellectually uh, interesting things to work on, right? Because it's so complicated. And um, these people are clever and they um, they are trying all the players in the market or at least the, the top players for sure anyways, when they're uh, looking for a solution. So that's that's kind of um, really good for us because we are um, not as overfunded or, or funded as some of the other players in the market and we are still a scrappy 30 person uh, a startup. So. Uh, that's for sure uh, the good part. So people always try us out and then they go with the, the product that they like the best. And yeah, like um, this is a big decision for a product team, right? Like usually these teams use Jira to, to manage uh, developers and tasks. And then they maybe use, um, I don't know, um, Slack and, and Intercom for customer feedback. And, um, and, and what they today do is they manage all the product strategy and the product management in Excel spreadsheets, right? And PowerPoint, as we mentioned. And um, the decision uh, to now move to a more professional solution is, a, in my opinion, a more and more a, a no-brainer. Uh, but then they quickly discover that this is a very important decision. So that's why uh, they are looking uh, on places like Capterra or they're reading about 
um, what's the right way to do product strategy and to prioritize um, my backlog. And uh, we are just trying to be helpful and not pushing pushing our product and, and trying to, to hard sale to sell to you because that it's never working. I agree. You, you cannot trick the user, especially you're no. talking about product managers, people who are in the trenches, seeing every single product out there, right? So yeah. No, uh, no chance. Yes, you know, obviously, social validation is good, but at the end of the day, you want to get your hands dirty. You want to play around with the tool and then make your own decision. Yes. So um, one of the indicators of a product-led organization is when the CEO comes from a product background. That's not the only way to do it, but obviously, in this case, it is true. Uh, and in your title, you say that you are the CEO and the CPO. So how do you wear those two hats? Um, <clears throat> well. There are only two ways how how Airfocus is, uh, is is gonna stay a success story. It's when we get our product right, and then when we also get like all the surrounding stuff like communication and customer support, right? Like, uh, but it's the product is the most important um, part of our puzzle and um, uh, of, of 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 our value proposition. And it's just that I was um, the the first product manager on the team when we were just three people and I kind of remained in that position and uh, now where we even have a few product managers on the team but um, on, on the one hand to be super honest it's very difficult for me to let go because I'm still so deeply involved uh, on the product side with that which I sometimes should not be and you can ask my colleagues uh, yeah but it's uh, it's just like super crucial that um, me as the, the the leading person in the company um, is still involved in like all the sprint plannings and, and and roadmap sessions and so on it's there's just no other way uh, that that we build this uh this platform uh, even if you don't have the official cpo title as a ceo like i'm sure you're still going to be involved and and i've seen that across the board i love product i'm still involved in that i think one of the challenges yeah. is probably to kind of create a space for other product leaders to shape that vision and really feel empowered to grow otherwise we're going to become bottleneck Yes, that's that's already happening. You're very right. Um, yeah, you, you have to make room for for others to to develop their own thinking and and, and, and problem solving. Hundred so, uh, percent. I I love this question because each CEO is different. But I want to learn more about your your calendar. How what does your day to day look like? <laughs> yeah, so I for sure don't want to bore you with like um, no days like the other. But in my case, it's it's very true. So um, I, I start uh, in the morning. I actually am not a super early morning person, not because um, I am not getting up early, but because I, uh, I drive my daughter to, to kindergarten every morning. So <laughs> that makes me only start at around 9 o'clock. And then I prepare um, a little list of things that I must get done by the end of the day because I'm I like I'm still very involved in, in getting stuff done and um, I try to pick the most important projects and usually um, I get only 50% of those done. So I'm, I'm, I'm prioritizing my day essentially. Right? And then uh, we have a, a product daily, I'm, I'm involved in that. And then, um, I mean, it's really difficult to, 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 to look at my, my calendar because it's, uh, it's so all over the place all the time with, with hiring, fundraising um, lately, uh, like we went through uh, major uh, product up upgrades and migrations in the last um, two months. Uh, we worked on stuff for 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 uh, ten months in the in the basement without releasing anything new, and then shipped it all at once. So that was like uh, insane. And we at the same time uh, rebranded um, Air Focus and launched a new website. So it, this kind of stuff you you cannot plan. It's just like survival survival mode all day. But now it's getting better. <laughs> I mean, in reality, it's always a roller coaster, right? Like, uh, and and one of the funny things I think in general as a CEO is you kind of reinvent yourself. And I'm sure at the very beginning, when the when you were in the basement just building, it was all about just shipping the product. Now you mentioned fundraising, hiding, and many other things around, and uh, it's exciting and stressful at the same time. Yes, a hundred percent, very stressful. Uh, but super exciting. I, I love my job. I don't want to do anything else. Um, it, 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 it's awesome. So what is the status of the company today? How many people are working there? Yeah, we are a bit more than 30 people right now operating uh, out of Europe. Ma mainly we have um, our first hires in, in the US also. 
And um, yeah, we're, tr we're, we're a remote first company, although we have an office here in Hamburg, Germany, uh, but uh, we make sure that uh, this is a uh, remote company. So when someone remote is styling in on a meeting, um, everyone goes remote um, to really um, make sure that we, that we have this culture where, where everyone feels to be on the, on the same level. Like, uh, yeah. we're, noticing, we're noticing this trend, obviously, um, especially because of the pandemic when a lot of organizations are building their virtual HQ, but you've been working remotely and I've been working before it was cool. So I want yes. to hear like, you know, from, from your perspective, also being based in Europe, have you noticed any differences trying to build a global product with a strong um, customer base in the US? I think, um, the answer would have probably been different two years ago and probably biased by, um, uh, let's say, uh, stuff that you read on the internet where, you, where, where it says you have to be in San Francisco and, and stuff like this. But um, I, I have more and more the feeling that um, it doesn't really matter uh, where you're located, especially when you're uh, product-led uh, growth um, and um, you can hire people um, in, in two minutes via Upwork or other platforms um, and they can join you uh, remotely um, to, to provide customer success or customer support in the US. Like it's, stuff has, has gotten a lot easier and um, it just allows you um, to hire the best, best talent. Because if I would just hire based out of this little, little uh, limited pool here in Hamburg, I would not be able to, to, to onboard the people uh, that we have today. So. Yeah, and that question is becoming less and less relevant. I think it's going to get to a point that it's not even going to exist because you are going to be regulated yes. by the quality of your product and by the, what, what your customers yeah. say about you, not by yes. where someone is, you know, living. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it now already feels like a like a no brainer, right? Like two years ago, we would have said mm, maybe, uh, but now it's it's super obvious where this is going. Yeah, you know, I remember when I started. Um, in my previous company, like I was explaining that, oh, we had a team, uh, I'm from Spain, so was, I was always based in San Francisco, but we always hire remotely. And it was like, almost like an excuse, like, well, but you know, but I uh, have a, a good network. I had to justify why someone wasn't working in the same office. Now it's a, comp it, it went from that to a competitive advantage. Like, oh, you're so smart. You're hiding across the world. <laughs> to now a commodity. We're like, okay, I get it. Everyone is doing it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So let's talk about the future, um, the future of Air Focus. You mentioned that obviously you guys are much more than just a roadmapping tool. You are home for products. And, and I think that also requires strong integrations with other products because if you try to be the best for everyone at the, at the end of the day, it would be the best for nobody. So how do you go about integrating with different tools to make sure that you are the hub, but at the same time, you give flexibility to the product teams to create their own stack? Yeah, so um, you, I love what you said earlier, where you said that you um, you essentially solved uh, your own problem. Um, so um, I built Airfox to solve my own problem, and I knew we had Jira as as as, as the, the tool that was irreplaceable in the company. Um, so from day one, we built on top of uh, of Jira, and then uh, very quickly we learned okay, other tools, uh, other companies are using Trello, or Asana, uh, Azure DevOps, all these tools, and so. From really from day one, we had integrations into these systems, and we then also quickly learned that these integrations need to be um, super advanced with two-way sync and mapping and 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 all these things because um, tools like Jira, Trello, ClickUp, Lady, Asana, they're great tools, right? Like um, they, they they're just not made for product strategy or product management as a kind of product hub, uh, but for Collaboration and, and, and project management—they're awesome, right? Like they are not going going to go away, and uh, that's why we have to, and we're, we're happy to sit on top of of this landscape uh, and help you make uh, better product decisions uh, on a daily, but mostly on a on a strategic level. So that's that's a trend we've seen. Um, tools that products that really want to be category leaders, and and you want to define and go very deep into something by definition they need to put all their energy into that. And I think that having the ability for products to integrate with others in an easy way, it's really powerful. I remember those days where like you had to build everything. First of all, you had to build in-house, but not only that, you had to build every single type of thing. And it was just a nightmare. Now it's really yeah. amazing to see product leaders and other creators in general to be able to plug and play certain blocks that work 
so they can yeah. focus on really adding value to the customer instead of reinventing the wheel. Yes. Yeah, the beauty is that we are really able to to focus on on the things that 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 we are good at and that we want to solve, which is product strategy and and, and certain parts of product management. I mean, the, the the definition of these two terms is very difficult, but um, <laughs> um, like we're, we're we're not here to uh, to replace um, how how you prioritize your your Jira back backlog. Like this is not not what Apple is here. Yeah, is here that, for. that's so, that's um, not move. And how do you guys drink your own champagne? I guess you obviously use Air Focus in house, but what other tools are part of your stack? Yeah, so yeah, obviously we use Air Focus as a strategic product tool to uh, like do all the things that I mentioned earlier. And, and then on top of of this, uh, we we of course using Slack um, also since since day one. And then um, a tool that we introduced around two years ago it was uh, Notion, and we love Notion. Notion, Notion is is awesome. Um, and we actually learned a lot from from Notion also in terms of our own approach to building building Air Focus because uh, Notion is all about modularity, right? Like you you essentially start with 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 nothing and you can then build on top and really build fancy uh, applications even and uh, websites and and whatever you wanna whatever you wanna do and um, and we're kind of um, going into a similar direction. So we're we're not. Uh, believers of um, there's one way to to fit all product teams into a certain way of doing product strategy we instead um, adapt to to your stack and and, and, and your situation uh, by being super modular and um, we just are trying to be helpful and listening uh, to to the problems that you have and then giving you solutions um, that fit to uh, fit to these problems and that is um, kind of similar to, to how um, notion approaches um, uh, their problem. We use Notion in house as well, and it's really amazing to see really so many tools that are very visual. And now, like yeah. this, are part of this, what some people would, call, would say, no code, which means yeah. basically you don't need to throw a single line of code in order to build. And yeah. this sounds obvious today, but back in the day, that was impossible. I remember a yeah. lot of our students would say, "Hey, do I need to be a software engineer in order to become a product manager? Do I need to code?" Doing an MBA, like no <laughs> to any of that. I mean, obviously there are many things that you need to learn, but it's more about just really understanding the customer and leveraging technology to fit those needs rather than going so deep into technology to build something very complicated and then see if the customer likes it. Yeah, it's it's really uh, interesting, and um, I'm also following um, indie hackers still a lot, also since since the very beginnings, and like the the, the kind of applications and companies that. Uh, these these indie hackers build um, based with based on low code or no code is is just uh, astounding. So, what do you think is like the future of of product? Where are we going? Uh, that's a complicated question, but um, I think um, with kind of connecting um, to what we just had like a minute ago uh, with with no code tools and the ability for everyone to to create applications and solve problems. Um, obviously, this is a, a positive thing, but this also uh, means that there's a, a much more, much more competition, right? Like, and uh, and and um, so, kind of building tools and building stuff has sort of become a commodity. And if you're um, not building the stuff yourself with low code, you can, uh, I don't know, get 20k and uh, set up a, a dev shop in in Ukraine and, and and build build stuff yourself. So, I think in the long run. Uh, the things that will win and 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 retain are the things that have like outstanding quality, and in my opinion, um, you only get that when you're really strategic and you you're kind of going beyond just um, understanding product. You you also have to understand business and you have to kind of uh, bring these uh, these two things together. Of course, like the customer is also a big part of um, of, of of this um, kind of. Uh, uh, trial, but um, yeah, like um, you have to be strategic and you have to uh, to understand business in order to build products that uh, really um, create outcomes um, that help you uh, win. So I, I agree with you. I think now product is becoming more strategic in general. Like I see a lot of CEOs that they call themselves product people, and yeah. a lot of companies that are product led. And this is not just for the companies that sell products to product managers. This is just across the board, and yes. and it's a big responsibility for 
for people who work in this industry to really to really build something that people care about <laughs> instead of just yes. shipping for the sake of it yes yeah, yeah, and it's about um, so many small things like um, gamification and understanding network effects and, and, and bringing all of that together. And this all of goes beyond just, um, I don't know, writing user stories and user mapping and, and, and all that stuff. It, it's, it's, it's bringing it to a kind of a higher level and, and, and um, so solving business problems at the end of the day. And I think sometimes we tend to for forget this as, as product yeah. people, I, my, myself mm -hmm. included. It's it's normal. I mean, you mentioned product strategy multiple times. I think it's it's the right word here. We come from a world where product was very misunderstood. And still, in a lot of organizations, they they say project management. They they treat it almost as like, okay, here's a list of tasks, a laundry list, and you have to go through them instead of like really let's elevate the function to to decide strategically where are we going as a company. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Uh... Yeah, it's very, very different than, than project management for sure. <laughs> well, it's been honor, uh, awesome to chat with you. Is there anything else you would like to add? Uh, no, I just wanted to congratulate on what you've built with uh, Product School. It's, a, it's an amazing uh, platform and you're doing uh, outstanding work and uh, we're, we're very happy to, uh, to, to read your stuff and, and, and partner up on, on projects. Really good. Well, thank you for giving back to the community. Bye. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.